Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the singing of our national anthem and the invocation. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air. night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or oh, the land of Let us pray. Heavenly Father, most glorious God, you have established for each of us your high standard of sacrificial service, courage in the face of adversity, and dedication. Preside with us in this ceremony as we honor these silent professionals, these commandos, who have demonstrated conspicuous and unwavering loyalty, devotion to duty, and lifelong dedication to their profession. Add your honor to our efforts to honor and your divine benediction that these honored few and we gathered here may remain faithful to your mission to the very end, when on that great day you may say, well done, good and faithful servant. In your holy name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Commando Hall of Honor inductees and their families, flag and general officers, distinguished visitors, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to United States Special Operations Command and to today's Commando Hall of Honor induction ceremony. Today, this command and the special operations community gather together to honor nine individuals whose service to our nation spans 70 years, from World War II to Operation Enduring Freedom. They will join 41 of their fellow warriors in the Commando Hall of Honor, which includes among its members such legendary names as Aaron Bank, Charlie Beckwith, Ted Lunger, Sidney Shacknow, and William Darby. Their contributions and legacies to this community and this country have been unquestionably influential and are truly inspirational. The Commando Hall of Honor was established in 2010 by former U.S. SOCOM Commander Admiral Eric T. Olson. This event inducts those soft warriors whose bravery, skill, knowledge, and patriotism set them apart from others. As part of the Commander's Special Awards Program, today's inductees join the storied ranks of those who preceded them. The awards heraldry symbolizes SOF's mission and the honorees. The Commando Hall of Honor ribbon and medal has special significance. Each facet conveys a unique meaning or historical reference. Gold 
represents the quality of excellence as performed by the command in defense of the nation. Black represents operations performed under the cover of darkness. Three stripes denote the strength derived from all three departments of service. Four notches represent the cardinal points of a compass. Four squared off corners allude to the corners of the world. The rope signifies strength through unity. And the spear represents the force of an initial attack. This award recognizes individuals who have served with distinction within the Special Operations Forces community. These individuals embody the skills, values, spirit and courage of a Special Operations Forces warrior. Their impact is extraordinary and enduring. Past awardees come from every branch of service and have participated in every conflict since World War II. This year's inductees' outstanding accomplishments and contributions are no exception. The commander is privileged to induct nine outstanding warriors into the SOCOM Commando Hall of Honor. The honorees of 2015 are Major General James Hobson, First Lieutenant Jack Knight, Colonel James Kyle, Command Sergeant Major Richard Lamb, Lieutenant Colonel Terrence Moore, Colonel John Ripley, Colonel Philip Stewart, Colonel Lynn Stull, and Chief Warrant Officer 4, Paul Zeisman. The United States Special Operations Command's Commando Hall of Honor recognizes the exceptional contribution to national defense made by their inductees. Congratulations to all recipients of this outstanding honor. Thank you, uh, thank you, Christian. And thanks to all of you for, uh, for being here today. It is, it is a great honor for, uh, for us to uh, hold this event with such a, an august group of, uh, of inductees and uh, with family and friends uh, from coming from far off places. Um, I do want to do a couple of uh, individual uh, recognitions for some of, our, some of our distinguished visitors today. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, General Lloyd Austin, the commander of uh, United States Central Command, one of our principal mission partners and a huge consumer of soft capability. Uh, Lloyd, thanks for joining us today. I'd also like to uh, acknowledge uh, General Retired Pete and Cindy Schumacher, uh, former U.S. Special Operations Command uh, commander and former Chief of Staff of the Army. Thanks, uh, thanks for being here. We also have with us today Lieutenant Colonel Chun Im Bum, uh, the Republic of Korea Special Warfare Command Commander. Uh, thank you very much, General, for, uh, for being here. We're glad to have you. Uh, of course, we've got six of our nine uh, uh, recipients are with us today. Uh, three, unfortunately, are, are sadly no longer with us, uh, but they are represented by Carol Stahl, Billy Knight, and Tom Ripley, who are here to accept on behalf of their husband, brother, and father. Um, as, uh, as, early, as mentioned earlier, today's ceremony, uh, we're doing it here in the War Games Center where we do have some limited seating capacity, uh, but be assured that this is being projected across the command through the wonder of the internet, uh, through a capability we call soft tube uh, that allows literally everyone in the command to uh, participate and, and see this event today. Um, Within the room here and in the upstairs, we have over 120 family uh, members and friends who have traveled from all around the country and indeed, uh, in some cases, from around the world uh, to be here. And I speak for all service members, past and present, when I say to uh, our family members and friends uh, that we could not do this 
uh, without your love and support. You are truly the foundation upon which all of us stand, and we are so grateful uh, that you are here today. So thank you for, uh, for making the time to be here today. Uh, today we are recognizing nine uh, men for their service, not just to the special operations community, but in fact to the nation as a whole. As Christian mentioned in the opening, our, induct our inductees represent seven decades of honorable and faithful service to the nation, spanning from World War II to the present day. Combined, uh, they have given us nearly 300 years of active duty and civil service to the nation. Today, they will take their places among 41 Special Operations Forces brothers uh, whose service and contributions echo in the history books of every conflict this nation has fought in. Uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen, uh, Marines uh, uh, from all walks of life and all occupational uh, specialties. I want to briefly highlight each of the extraordinary warriors that we are recognizing today. And I'll start with reaching back to World War II and back to the China, Burma, India theater uh, with uh, First Lieutenant Jack Knight, who was one of the forefathers of our Rangers today. Uh, Jack made the ultimate sacrifice for his actions near Loi Kang in uh, 1945, posthumously earning the only Medal of Honor awarded during the ground campaign in Burma in World War II. The conflict in Vietnam ties four of our inductees together today. Colonel John Ripley, commander of the infamous Ripley's Raiders and forefather of today's Marsoc Raiders, John earned the Navy Cross for rigging and blowing up a bridge in Dong Ha during the North Vietnamese Army Easter Offensive. Colonel Lynn Stahl, a career Foreign Service officer and advisor during Vietnam, Lynn dedicated 40 years to the Special Operations Community to include serving here at Special Operations Command Headquarters as the liaison officer from the Defense Threat Reduction Agency. Major General James Hobson, Jr., an air commando with over 6,500 hours in 11 different airframes, flew numerous missions over South Vietnam and earned distinction for his participation in, uh, in, Grenada, in the Grenada Rescue during Operation Urgent Fury. And Lieutenant Colonel Terrence Moore, started his career as an enlisted force reconnaissance marine, leading and ended up leading a variety of unconventional warfare and special operations detachments in Vietnam, and ended up dedicating three decades of service to the special operations community. Appropriately, this induction ceremony is being held one day short of the 35th anniversary of Operation Eagle Claw. The next three men share a common bond with that operation, an operation whose outcome gave birth to not only many of our unique capabilities within the Special Operations Command, but in fact to this very headquarters. Colonel James Kyle uh, led the Air Force portion of that dangerous and complex rescue mission in 1980. Congress selected him to investigate the lessons learned and apply them for the future. His input directly impacted the inception of this command. Chief Warrant Officer Paul, uh, for Paul Zeisman was the signal planner for Operation Eagle Claw. Uh, responsible for all communications personnel and equipment, uh, and went on to dedicate more than 45 years of service to the nation, earning the title as the godfather of soft communications. And Command Sergeant Major Rick Lamb, uh, whose family lineage of service goes all the way back to the Crimean War, has served in every major conflict since Operation Eagle Claw, from Korea to Somalia to the Syrian border in Iraq. Rick has served in eight major operations on five continents. Uh, he continues to serve our soft warriors today, serving in our J3 International Division, providing that credibility and connective tissue with our global partners. I should note that Nick will, uh, Rick will also be honored later this spring at our Special Operations uh, in Industry Conference with the Bull Simons Award. The final inductee today is Colonel Phil, Philip Stewart who had distinguished himself during a 42-year career as both a commissioned intelligence officer and a dedicated civil servant. Phil influenced, planned, and dedicated multiple successful intelligence operations in some of our nation's most dangerous no-fail missions. In a minute, we'll ask each of the recipients to join myself and Command Sergeant Major Thetford while Christian reads their citations. Candidly, what you will hear about these men today whether what I have just described or in the citations to follow will not do justice to the dedication, commitment, 
and sacrifice of these remarkable warriors. They are true patriots who laid it all on the line for the nation and for their fellow warriors. The sensitivity of their operations and the individual contributions uh, that they made prevents full public disclosure in many cases. As the video stated earlier, these men embody the skills, value, spirit, and courage of the special operations warrior. Much of what they have done, our nation, our citizens, will never fully grasp or comprehend. And their contribution to our nation is immeasurable, and their impact extraordinary and enduring. Today is about much more than medals and mementos. It is about honoring these men and their service to the nation they love, to honor their sacrifice, and to honor their families who stood by their side as they did the nation's bidding. Thank you again for joining Michelle and I, and indeed the rest of the Special Operations Command, uh, to honor and recognize these great men today. Thank you very much. General Votel will now formally induct the nine newest members of the Commando Hall of Honor. We ask that you please hold your applause until all inductees have been recognized. In alphabetical order, this year's first inductee to the United States Special Operations Command Commando Hall of Honor is Major General James L. Hobson, Jr. General Hobson, if you would please join the Commander and Senior Enlisted Advisor. Major General James L. Hobson, Jr., United States Air Force, retired, distinguished himself during a lifetime of service to the United States and Special Operations Forces in myriad assignments during his 32-year career. Major General Hobson's contribution to Special Operations Aviation and Air Commandos with their unique brand of air power are inscribed throughout the history of Air Force Special Operations. He flew numerous MC-130 missions over South Vietnam and in 1984 received the Air Force's prestigious McKay Trophy for actions as aircraft commander of the lead MC-130E combat talent during Operation Urgent Fury in Grenada. He held command of groups and wings both stateside and overseas. His most notable command positions were serving as commander, 39th Special Operations Wing, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida, and vice commander, 23rd Air Force Herbert Field, Florida. His career in special operations culminated with his selection and final assignment as commander, Air Force Special Operations Command, Herbert Field, Florida. Major General Hobson's unwavering loyalty, devotion to duty, and lifetime of dedication reflect great credit upon himself, Special Operations Forces, and the United States Special Operations Command. Today's second inductee is First Lieutenant Jack L. Knight. Accepting on behalf of First Lieutenant Knight is his brother, Dr. Bill Knight. Dr. Knight, please come forward and join the Commander and Senior Enlisted Advisor. First Lieutenant Jack L. Knight, United States Army, distinguished himself above and beyond the call of duty on February 2nd, 1945, near Loikong, Burma. He was the F Troop Commander, 124th Cavalry Regiment Special, a maneuver element of the 53 32nd Brigade Provisional, also known as the Mars Task Force, a legacy unit of today's 75th Ranger Regiment. On that day, Lieutenant Knight led an attack against an entrenched Japanese position that dominated the hills overlooking the Burma Road. Lieutenant Knight's strong leadership, while single-handedly attacking key dug-in enemy positions with disregard for his own life, earned him the Medal of Honor posthumously. A former battalion commander in Merrill's Marauders commented, in over four years of combat, I have seen many officers fight and die for their country. But the actions of Lieutenant Knight in leading his troops against a strong enemy will always remain as the finest example of American courage, 
valor, and leadership of any officer I have had under my command. Lieutenant Knight was the only soldier serving in an Army Special Operations Legacy Unit to receive the Medal of Honor during World War II. First Lieutenant Knight's unwavering loyalty, devotion to duty, and lifetime of dedication reflect great credit upon himself, Special Operations Forces, and the United States Special Operations Command. Today's third inductee is Colonel James H. Kyle. Colonel Kyle, if you would please come forward and join the commander and senior enlisted advisor. Colonel James H. Kyle, United States Air Force, retired, distinguished himself during a lifetime of service to the United States Special Operations and Air Force Special Operations Commands in myriad worldwide assignments beginning with more than 1,000 hours of challenging and dangerous combat missions over Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. Colonel Kyle was hand-chosen to lead the Air Force Special Operations Division of the 7th Air Force Headquarters in Saigon, with responsibility over all Air Force gunships, combat talons, and rotary wing aircraft in Southeast Asia. Later, he managed special missions that resupplied and battled Cambodian troops in danger of being overrun by the Khmer Rouge and held a pivotal leadership role in the United States response to the hijacking of the United States merchant ship SS Mayaguez in 1975. Colonel Kyle planned and led the Air Force component of Operation Eagle Claw in 1980. He participated in the post-mission review and congressional investigation of that mission's failure that eventually led to the establishment of United States Special Operations Command in 1987. Colonel Kyle's unwavering loyalty, devotion to duty, and lifetime of dedication reflect great credit upon himself, Special Operations Forces, and the United States Special Operations Command. Today's fourth inductee is Command Sergeant Major Richard C. Lamb. 